decline once again. Residents in the Hudson Valley are getting back out there, albeit safely. One movie theater opening for business for the first time since November. News 12's Carol Wilkinson was out speaking to moviegoers. COVID rates continuing to drop statewide. The crowds at restaurants, bars, and movie theaters are surging. It feels amazing. Uh, I can finally really enjoy the outdoors. Stay and stay with my family. It's really great. This newly reopened AMC theater in Portchester showing movies again after pandemic related shutdowns in March and November. I'm sick of staying. A lot of people are sick of staying home. So, yeah, it's nice. There's no shortage of safety protocols while the theater promises a fun environment for the whole family. We're actually going to go to White Plains, mm -hmm. but I opened the door and they were open. I was like, oh, good. I could stay in town. <laughs> For now, this Porchester location is open on weekends only. But for those people who've been craving entertainment outside of the home, that's just fine. In Porchester, Carol Wilkinson, News 12. Thanks. All right, well, there is a new bodega on the block in the Bronx. And owners say it's all about bringing jobs, and good food, and the community. Have beer right there, bringing it all to the community and giving back. News 12's Justine Miller and Morazania with this story. This may look like your run of the grill chopped cheese from any Bronx bodega, but in fact, it's the star sandwich at the borough's newest deli. Very excited, very excited. It feels good. <laughs> Today, Black Bodega opened on East 167th Street, a few blocks from Grand Concourse. At its helm, former record label executive Alizé Jones, his brother Robert Forbes, and their childhood friend Rashid Nash, all from the neighborhood. It's a great feeling to be actually a part of the community, a community that you grew up in, you was born and raised in. They say it's all about creating jobs in the community, especially while the pandemic rages on. Giving back like this is, is, is an amazing feeling. The bodega has all your staples from household goods to snacks. But this is really where the magic happens here in the kitchen. They have everything from sandwiches and wings to, of course, that classic chopped cheese. Born in the Bronx, chopped cheese. I eat it often, so I make it with extra love and care. The bodega's two chefs excited and grateful for their jobs. Here you go, my man. A lot of pride and joy. A blessing and a pleasure to be doing this at this time. And customers seem to approve. Good stuff there. Let's do a chopped cheese. Bronx-born rapper and reality show Love & Hip Hop star <laughs> Peter Guns also showing support. As kids, we didn't have role models to go look at and say, wow, they opened up a business, they own a the store. So now the kids get to see a, 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 a black-owned bodega. Councilwoman Vanessa Gibson proud of the impact on the neighborhood. As having black-owned businesses builds economic wealth and power in our communities. But the most important stamps of approval coming from their families. It's really, really cool. I'm filled with joy. I'm happy. The owners tell me they hope this is just the first of many black bodegas throughout the city. And to share the experience in other boroughs in other places. That's kind of the ideal goal in the vision. In Morrisania, Justine Miller, News 12. News 12's Shosh Bedrosian reports from La Pearl, a Caribbean restaurant in Stamford, which says it honors Black History Month all months. You may know them from their mouth-watering posts on Instagram, but La Pearl restaurant and bar in Stamford is tapping into unknown territory. There weren't any restaurant like this before, especially a Caribbean fusion restaurant. And through a modern and contemporary space on Bank Street, they're transforming the way you see Caribbean food. Well, a lot of times when people look at Caribbean restaurants, they think it's like a hole in the wall. And that's not what we're about. Two cousins from Haiti. They say whether it's Black History Month or not, their Haitian culture is always celebrated through their food. You know, focusing on Black History Month with, you know, with, with what we're providing. We're providing cultural food. Um, from our culture. We're always doing things, you know, trying to highlight things from our culture. From jerk chicken, braised oxtail ragu pasta, chicken fritters, to this creamy mac and cheese, they say what you see is what you get. So I had to try those chicken fritters I saw on Instagram. Now these chicken fritters are mixed with herbs, different spices, and then they're fries. I'm going to have to try them myself. Perfect mix. Black History Month or not, La Pearl says their customers have supported their Caribbean fusion mission from the start. I think Stanford is really a melting pot with so many ethnicities. It's so diverse, you know, 
we're just adding a little piece to the pie that's already been, you know, blossoming here. In Stanford, Shosh Pedrosian, News 12, Connecticut. La Pearl is operating at half capacity for indoor dining and is also doing curbside pickup. Check them out. News 12's coverage of Black History Month continues on our website. Go to news12.com, click on the drop down menu. You'll see a section from stories about trailblazers from our community to ways to support local black owned businesses. It's all on news12.com and on the News 12 app. We are still following the story of 22 year old Charlie Capalbo. This Fairfield native is battling cancer for a third time. News 12 Connecticut's Ali Warshavsky has more on how the community is showing its support through a Westport business. Charlie is just such a light and his energy is pretty contagious. He's a really awesome kid. Charlie Capalbo's energy is so contagious. His clothing line launched a week ago, has gotten over 1,000 orders from Tori and her brother Roscoe's business, the 203. Capalbo was a star goalie for Fairfield Ludlow High School, and the town rallied behind him during his first and second battles with cancer. He designed his own gear to bring awareness to the disease and help with the costs. But he couldn't keep up with the demand on his own, so Tori and Roscoe stepped in. The first day alone, I think it was like 400 plus orders, and um, it's really remarkable. Um, not just the orders, but how many people are messaging us and want to know how they can help and what way. So it's really cool. The orders just keep coming in like every single day. It's, a, it's overwhelming, but in a good way. The money from the Capalbo Strong line will go towards Charlie's medical expenses as he battles leukemia at Boston Children's Hospital. Big shout out to Tori and Roscoe at the 203. Um, this collaboration could have turned out better. Um, you know, we're so excited. It's, it's been something awesome to do uh, during the stay in the hospital. Charlie's been through so much, and I think people want him to know that the whole community is behind him. Those who've placed an order will be happy to hear what Capalbo shared with us today. Also, we got some good news from the doctors today, um, so that's pretty awesome. The Capalbo Strong Line is available on the 203 website, which you can find on News12.com. In Westport, Ali Warshavsky, News12, Connecticut. Jones Beach. Look at all of those right there. It's a list of shows with tickets up for grabs, but the lineup is subject to change due to the pandemic and local doctors are asking questions about how we'll be kept safe if we make it to the show. News 12 Long Island's Virginia Yui is at Jones Beach tonight to explain what's ahead. Virginia. Well, Rich, the Jones Beach Theater is covered with snow right now, but come this summer, this place is expected to be filled with concert goers. The first rescheduled concerts are set for July, and ticket holders say they are super excited. There were so many exciting things coming in, and it all just came to a crashing halt. Kara Reifert of West Islip remembers the bummer summer of 2020, when the pandemic led to the cancellation of the Jones Beach Theater's summer concert season. Jones Beach! Let's go! But now, concert goers are hopeful live music will play again at the amphitheater this summer. Concert promoter Live Nation posted a lineup of rescheduled concerts on its website and is selling tickets. Ryford's tickets are for the Alanis Morissette concert that's rescheduled for August 29th. I have cabin fever big time, so this is just going to feel like New Year's Eve or something. It's just going to be so exciting. I can't even wait. Governor Cuomo gave the green light for sports and entertainment events in major stadiums and arenas to reopen with limited spectators beginning February 23rd. Doctors say concert goers should remember the virus is still a threat and masking and social distancing are key to staying safe. Anytime people go to concerts, there are places where they tend to congregate. Tailgate parties for sure, food concessions, the restrooms, any place where people tend to get crowded, that, that's a, a danger zone. And people need to take some individual responsibility uh, and the venues need Need, need to take their own steps in order to keep people safe, which means socially distanced at all times, not just when they're in their seats, but before, during, and, and after the concert. Ryford says she'll take all precautions for the chance to experience live music again. I'm getting the goosebumps right now just thinking about it because I love live music so much. Well, it's a very exciting idea, but we've got to do it safely. So what measures will Jones Beach Theater put in place, Virginia, to keep concert goers safe? 
Well, we called Live Nation to ask them about that, but we have not heard back yet. However, all venues are required to follow state guidelines, which include face coverings, temperature checks, and socially distanced seating. Rich? Hollywood's awards season getting into full swing next weekend with the Golden Globes. News 12 New Jersey's John Bathy reports some nominated projects. will put the spotlight on Jersey movie making. When the world watches the trial of the Chicago 7, it is in fact seeing a bit of New Jersey. Aaron Sorkin's drama was shot mainly in Patterson, with its powerful courtroom scenes staged in a former church there. The film is up for five Golden Globe Awards next weekend, putting New Jersey's film industry once again in the spotlight. When a project that was shot in New Jersey gets major awards recognition, is it sort of like, yeah, that's great, or does that do something to propel the industry in the state? It happened with uh, The Sopranos, when The Sopranos became a huge series. Uh, suddenly, uh, New Jersey was the place to make movies and television shows. So. Stephen Gorlick is executive director of the New Jersey Motion Picture and Television Commission. He says the state's film and TV industries generated $420 million in economic activity in 2019. That's up sharply as productions were lured back through tax credits following years of decline. There's also other benefits, and, and one of them is the image benefit. When, when you have successful uh, movies, TV show shot here, and they're getting awards attention, then the state is getting attention. The motion picture was invented here in New Jersey, and of course we know that the industry was long ago lost to Hollywood, but is there still a sense of wanting to reclaim? Yeah, I mean, I think we do have a chip on our shoulder in that this is the state where the industry uh, was born, and we think we should reclaim that industry. To get more cameras rolling, it will take studios like this one, now under construction in Jersey City. Caven Point Studios plans to open soon. And last month, Palisade Stages opened in Kearney, where Hulu's Wu-Tang and American Saga is currently filming. Brick and mortar studios that are crucial to bringing more of the film industry back to where it all began. John Bathke, News 12, New Jersey. And earlier this year, New Jersey enacted programs to encourage long-term investment in movie studios in the state. Jersey widely scrutinized for COVID deaths in nursing homes, some 8,000 statewide. Our Keith Kosinski in Morris County, where residents and staff at one facility have a second shot at putting the pandemic in the past. At Spring Hills Assisted Senior Living Facility in Morristown, nearly 30 residents and staff receive a COVID-19 vaccine. For most here, it will be their second dose. I'm excited because it gave me a sense of hope and listening and hearing the news on how we are about to get back to normalcy. I'm excited. Facility leaders say they have been COVID free for the last six months. However, earlier in the pandemic, two Spring Hills residents died from the virus. 80-year-old Gilbert Moeller has been married to his wife for 55 years. While they're healthy, he hasn't been able to see her in person during the pandemic. He hopes this will change since he is vaccinated. I don't know if we really tell each other the truth, how things are and how we feel. We're always saying we're good, we're fine, everybody around us is fine. But is this really the truth? Of course, the pandemic has been challenging for all long term care facilities nationwide. According to the COVID-19 tracking project, 35% of all COVID-19 deaths in the US are from long term care facilities. In Morris County, 545 residents of long term care facilities have died from COVID-19 and over 7,800 statewide. As staff and residents at Spring Hills are now fully vaccinated, the hardships from earlier months of the pandemic may be behind them, but it will still be a slow process back to normal. We have now added to the protection that we have, but the world outside, people are still waiting to get vaccinated. So while we are stepping closer and closer to normalcy, there will still be the need to follow guidelines just to ensure safety for everybody. In Morristown, Keith Kosinski, News 12, New Jersey. More than a third of all COVID deaths in New Jersey are from so-called long-term care facilities. 
Security, it was a shovel brigade that formed out here. The group was brought together by the mayor of Ocean Township to help out people living here at Heritage Village, a senior housing complex. And their mission was pretty simple. All these cars behind me, clean them off because they were all plowed in. Armed with shovels, the volunteers made a beeline for cars packed in with snow by a plow. They were the remedy to a problem for anyone who parks in the street or a parking lot every night. Today exceeded my expectations. I actually have, you see, quite a few of the kids from the schools, various clubs. They all came together at the request of Mayor Chris Siciliano after a call from this woman, Patricia Brennan, at Heritage Village. She needed help and so did her neighbors. Everybody here is like using canes and walkers and wheelchairs. We can't do this, and the plow company plows us in. Enter these volunteers who are ready and willing to get outside to do something for someone else. We wanted to be there for those who need it the most, and you know, seniors live around here, so we're glad that we're able to make it out. There were a handful of teenagers from the high school who had a remote half day of school, and with no track practice, they decided to be productive and give a helping hand. My mom saw it on Facebook, <laughs> so then I texted them, and we all just decided to like come out and help like people who need to be shoveled. I don't know, life is just kind of boring right now, so we were like, why not just come out here and just help out? I mean, we're not really doing anything else. It may have been a quick hour and a half of work, but it goes a long way to helping those who will now have the freedom to get outside of the house and do something as simple as grocery shop or perhaps get to a doctor's appointment. We moniker ourselves as the community of gracious living, Ocean Township. And I'll tell you what, this, they really stepped up and they proved it today. And after making quick work of Heritage Village, the group got together and went to another spot on the other side of town. It was a true and very simple act of kindness. In Ocean Township tonight, I'm Chris Keating, News 12 New Jersey. We love it. Chris, thank you. Celebrating Black History Month earlier today, rewinding the clock back to the 1800s, taking a look at Brooklyn's connection to the Underground Railroad. News 12's Phil Tate joining the city's Parks Department tour and sharing the experience with us now from Brooklyn Heights. I'm really excited about it. I actually got rejected from it last year, and this year I got rejected again, but I called the Rangers and complained, and they allowed me to come in. Tiffany Martinbro was determined not to miss the party this year, an opportunity to learn more about African American history. And I was excited last night when I went to bed. I'm just looking forward to learning more about the Underground Railroad in Brooklyn. The Urban Park Rangers leading a tour throughout the concrete streets of Brooklyn Heights, where enslaved people from the South in the 1800s once tread on their escape to freedom. All right. We're going to be stopping at the house known today as the Truman Capote House, but where a very influential man, James Pennington, a black man, escaped from slavery in Maryland, made his way up to New York, established himself as a man minister in the Northeast. One of many stops along the way, including Plymouth Church and Juneteenth Grove, Rangers creating a experience reading firsthand accounts of enslaved people from that time. It seems like there's just a plethora of information coming from every direction during this month, so it's just something to look forward to and to learn from. But for Michael Garrett, his tour around Brooklyn Heights hit close to home. Being a descendant of, of Harriet Tubman, uh, my grandmother, Willa May Tubman, growing up, I had no idea who I was. I mean, um, just started learning as I got older who my family is. The Brooklyn man says this is a day he'll never forget and a moment he'll cherish forever. Uh, I'm actually shivering right now. It's like so amazing and um, I feel very spiritual right now that um, it's, it's just amazing. In Brooklyn Heights, Phil Tate, News 12. In the search for a cure, new details tonight in the federal mass vaccination site set to open soon in Yonkers. News 12's Ty Milburn joins us now from the location of that new site at the National Guard Armory with the latest. Ty. Uh, you know, Yankee Stadium serving as a huge vaccination site for folks in the Bronx and pretty soon us in Westchester will certainly have our very own. It's the National Guard Armory here in Southwest Yonkers. Pretty soon folks will be able to get a vaccination site uh, shots here, a thousand a day for five days a week. Now, State Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins, she calls this a game changer because of where the site is located, certainly in one of the hardest hits locations in all of the state. Now, starting next Wednesday, residents living 
in seven different zip codes in Yonkers and Mount Vernon can go online and register to get an appointment for a shot. In the following week, uh, the shots will be available to all Westchester County residents. We talked to Senator Cousins a short while ago, and she talked specifically about why it was important to have this site and this community. This is the place. Yonkers is the biggest city. Right. And certainly there's a concentration of the community that's so impacted uh, negatively by this COVID. So this was the right thing to do. I'm excited and I'm even more excited to get the word out. And those shots start on March 3rd. Registration starting in those seven zip codes on February the 24th. Coming up tonight at 10 o'clock, we're going to talk to folks who say they want to be the first in line when the shots start here at the National Guard Armory. That's the very latest from Yonkers. Ty Milburn, News 12. Culture. Hi, News 12. I just want the voice. Community. The first shot went into the arm of Port Washington nurse Sandra Lindsay. Connections. Seems like so much fun. It was pretty hectic. Discover News 12 New York. Hey, look, we're happy, right? A new way to see the best of News 12's local channels from across the tri-state area, all in one place. Now streaming 24-7 on your favorite devices. Discover News 12 New York today.